Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Chelsea. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my April 2022 Artisan Design Team project. For this month I created this beautiful card using the new Paradise Palms stamp set and the coordinating Palms dies. I also have another project that I'd love to show you after we create this card. If you are new to my channel and want to see more of my projects, click on the subscribe button and then the bell for notifications. I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator and help you with any of your paper crafting needs. To purchase any of the products you see me use today, please visit my online store and the link is in the description below. To begin this card, we're going to create some watercolor washes. I'm going to do one on some pool party cardstock and then I've got a watercolor wash here for this uh, grassy background piece and I'm doing that on some uh, basic white cardstock and on the pool party let's start with that one I'm going to use two different colors of blue that are just a little darker than the colored cardstock and I like watercoloring on colored cardstock because it kind of starts you off with that base color and then you just want to make sure that you use darker ink colors so I've got Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay now if I needed more ink here in the lids, I can either add uh, ink from the refills or I can squish them together to get ink. Today I'm going to just use a regular uh, paintbrush and a glass of water. The reason for this is because I want a lot of um, water mixed in and I just think it's a quick and easy way to use it. So I'm just going to take that and start with that lighter color up near the top and then add some darker. This is the Bermuda Bay near the bottom. Mix those together just a little bit and get a nice watercolor wash. So we'll let that dry and then we'll splatter that with some of the Bermuda Bay ink. And while that's drying, we'll go ahead and move to our greens for our grassy hill image. I've got Old Olive and Granny Apple Green. I think I'm going to need a little more ink for this one. Again, lots of water. I'm going to start with my lighter color. Just kind of add that at the top and then do a little darker color at the bottom. If I want more ink, I can just pick it right up from that um, ink pad too. Okay. Okay, so this piece is dry. And so I'm going to go ahead and get a lot of water, mix it with um, that ink. I did add another drop of ink from my refill. And then I'm going to kind of do the tapping technique when I splatter for this card. You do want to make sure that you've moved... Um, any pieces away because it does kind of get all over. So I'm just going to hold something underneath my paintbrush and then just tap the wet brush over that pencil or whatever you have to um, drop those little splatters. Okay, so it's going to look like this and we'll just put that off to the side and let it dry. Next, let's do our stamping. So I've got four palm trees. This grouping of three is one image, and then I've got a larger image with two layers of palm leaves at the top. So here is that grouping of three. And to get that multicolored image where we've got the top is green and the trunks are brown, I'm gonna use the Stampin' Write markers. These come in all of the Stampin' Up colors, so that's really easy to coordinate. You just color directly onto the rubber stamp. And I started with Granny Apple Green. And if you want to add any shadows, then you can add a little extra color with a darker color. I would recommend making sure that it's darker. I go from light to dark so that you don't accidentally get that dark color onto your lighter marker. And then do the same for the trunks. I'm starting with Crumb Cake. And then I'll do a little shadow with um, soft suede. And then you want to moisten it just a little bit by breathing on it. 
you can see how it gets kind of steamed up there. And then you can stamp that onto some cardstock. You get this really beautiful image. Next, I'm going to stamp the larger palm tree. They do come in separate images. So we've got one image of the trunk. And because it's bigger, I'm just going to use my ink pads and um, the sponge daubers. So inked it up in crumb cake and then soft suede. And with that soft suede, I'm just going to add a little darker image on the top and bottom. Then for the palm leaves, I'm using granny apple green and I'm gonna ink that up. And then I've got old olive and I'm gonna do this same thing with a sponge dauber. Just add a little bit of darker color around it and then stamp that and repeat for the other leaf too. So we're doing both leaf images. Okay, so you'll get something that looks like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut these out with the coordinating dies. Okay, so those are all done and ready to put off to the side for our card. So let's go back and check our watercolor. And so that's all dry. So I'm gonna show you a fun technique to get a unique shape using one of the basic border dies. So this one is kind of the chevron style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up one of the straight sides with the right, the bottom right side, add a little washi tape, and we're going to run it through our machine and it's going to create a, this cut. We're going to cut off the top left or top right corner and it's going to create a stitched look around the cardstock. So this is the first of four steps. Okay, so just be gentle as you remove that washi tape, especially from the center. Looks like I've got a little bit of a tear there. I can always cover that up with a gem or something. Okay, so that's my first one. Then I'm gonna flip it and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I'm lining it up with the bottom of my cardstock and letting that corner cut off the bottom left. Now I forgot to mention what size of cardstock I'm using. So I started with a three and a half by four and a half piece. So this is step number two. So now I have a piece that looks like this, which is almost the shape that we need, but to finish it off, we want to create that same stitching on the top and the bottom. And so to do that, you're just gonna take one of the straight edges and line it up against that edge. It's very simple. Just make sure that the edge of the cardstock hits the edge of the die so that you get a nice even stitching all the way across. So this is step three. So you can see how that stitching now goes all the way at the top and then we're gonna repeat for the bottom. So this is step four. So now your piece is finished and ready for your card. So there are just a couple other elements that we need before we can start putting the card together. We need to cut out the ground grassy piece and we're going to do that from our watercolor green paper. And then we also have this fun decorative design and I'm cutting that from some Misty Moonlight cardstock. So now we're ready to put our card together. And I've got a card base of Pool Party cardstock. I'm just gonna use my bone folder to make a nice crease. Next, I'm going to use one of the vellum layering design sheets. This one is the white map design, and I love these. I've been using them on a lot of my projects lately. I think it just gives the perfect amount of texture and that see-through element that I love about vellum. So that's just gonna go right in the center and it's four inches by five and a quarter. Next, I'm going to use one of the In Good Taste Designer Series papers. This one is a light blonde wood grain. It's three and a half inches by four and a quarter. 
and I'm just going to add it right to the center of my card base. I'm going to use my grid paper to find the center and I need just one inch on the top and one inch at the bottom. So that's going to go straight across my card. Like that. Now if I want to adhere that vellum down some more, I can do that underneath this wood grain paper. So if I need to add a little more adhesive there to make sure everything sticks. There we go. Okay, so now for that unique shape piece that we're gonna add right to the center. Okay, so I'm going to place this in the center. So you'll get something that looks like this. And now we can decorate it with our palm trees. So I'm going to put my large palm tree together. So here at the top, I'm going to add a glue dot to hold the bottom layer onto my trunk. And I'm gonna put the bigger grouping of leaves. And that is really pretty all by itself, but I really wanted to add a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna curl up this next layer just slightly to give it some depth and add another glue dot and just kind of stagger it just a little bit so it's not quite over that first one. And you can kind of pop it up just a little bit. Okay, so it just makes it a little bit fuller. All right, so let's add, let's first work on this bottom layer so I cut that decorative piece from Misty Moonlight and I need to cut it down so that it fits onto my card. So I want it to finish a full square. So I don't wanna cut a square in half. So I'm gonna grab my paper snips and just trim. I think I'm gonna trim, trim off three. One, two, three squares. So cut on the outside of that square so that you get a nice finished look. And then that's going to go right across our card like that. I'm going to add this with some liquid glue here in the center of each of these squares and then a little bit along the edge too, just to make sure that it holds down. Some really tiny dots of glue. I'll give you a close-up of that. And that just goes at the bottom. Just a little lower than that wood grain piece. Next, I'm going to add my grassy meadow or hill and a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom. And that's gonna leave me the top so that I can tuck in the trees behind it. So the little grouping of trees. So let's go ahead and do that next. A little bit of adhesive. On the top, I'm not worried about the bottom trunks because I can just tuck that in. And then we've got our larger tree trunk. And this time I'm gonna have it go over that blue. This one I have it going under, but either one, it doesn't matter. I do want this to pop up even more, and so I'm going to add a dimensional underneath. So maybe a couple dimensionals here to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna place, place a little glue dot at the bottom to hold that down. And that goes just down there in the corner and over those other trees right there. 
I love all those layers. It's really pretty. So next I'm going to use Misty Moonlight and I'm going to stamp my greeting on a piece that is two and a half inches by five eighths of an inch. And I'm going to use the wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day and stamp this in the center of that strip like that. And so I wanted to create a little bit of a worn look and so I'm just going to tear each side and then just kind of roll up the corners just a little bit. Okay. And then this will get added with some dimensionals on the back just right between the grass and that fun decorative piece right in the center of your card. Then the last thing I want to add are a couple of these iridescent rhinestone jewels. And I'm just going to add some a big one near the bottom. Maybe another little one there. And then we did have that tear, but I'm not really worried about it. And so I'm not going to add anything over it and a couple there in the corner where we cut them just to kind of accentuate that we created a fun shape with that pool party watercolored piece. Okay, so before we leave, I do want to share with you another project that I created using some of the same elements. And I know I don't do a lot of memory keeping on my channel. If you are interested in maybe seeing more of my memory keeping ideas, then uh, let me know in the comments below. So you can see here how we've got some of those exact same elements. And then I took that um, wood grain, added some more of that vellum layering designs with the map in black. And then there's this really pretty leaf image that is in the die set and I watercolored exactly the same way I did with the ground and cut that out two times and then did another little greeting on top. And these are my kids. We took them to Hawaii during fall break last year and they just had a really great time. And so I thought I wanted to remember that by creating this really cute pocket memory page. And Stampin' Up! does sell these easy pockets. And so if you're into memory keeping, this one's stuck. <laughs> Let's see about pulling this one out. But if you're into memory keeping, these I really recommend. They're just quick and easy to slide your pictures into and then decorate maybe one or two of the open areas. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this beautiful beach themed card today. If you're interested in getting any of the products you saw me use, please visit my online store and the link is in the description below. If you are interested in getting written instructions or seeing close-up images of how I created this card, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.